Okay, so when we come into uh, CVS, we mainly discuss about acute coronary syndrome, which is the main topic, and which is very important topic because it is an emergency and sometimes it can be asked in the exam. A few questions as well, but at least CVS will cover. CVS is one of the main topics in medicine, and they will ask a lot of questions in from CVS part. And about congestive heart failure, we will discuss valvular heart diseases, cardiomyopathies, pericardial diseases, and mainly about like hypertension, dyslipidemia, mainly the risk factors of heart diseases. So we will discuss all of these. So we will first go like in Australia, when you, if you have ever seen John Mantak, you will see that like we used to study in MBBS, MBBS we used to study as a uh, system wise right so we usually study like cardiovascular separately and then respiratory separate separately like that but in australian setting they usually go with symptom wise so in john murtag if you see they will mention about chest pain so uh, from that symptom they will actually provide you information so i would ask if someone says chest pain so what are the differentials that come into your mind? Maybe. Like simple ones. You can start with the simple ones. Um, I... Yes. I didn't hear you, doctor. You can unmute. And Myocardial unmute. infarction. Yeah, very good. That is the first one. So anyone, if some someone says just pain, MI is the most important differentials for us to like actually differentiate. And then usually in Australian setting, they say if someone presents with chest pain, we will always have to suspect MI other than excluding. Like after excluding that only, we have to think about other stuff. But MI is one of the main ones. So what are the other ones? What are the other ones when it comes to chest pain? Acidity, gastric reflux. Yeah, so reflux. Yeah, before that, you have to get more stuff. Aortic dissection, Dr. Shiva, very good. Like it is one of the main ones. Acute gastritis. Angina. Yeah, angina is like MI, so musculoskeletal pain, yeah. But there are actually, I would say, there are three main ones that we will have to get into your mind. So if someone says about chest pain, the first thing has to be coming into your mind is MI. Yes, very good, Dr. Shiva. So MI, pulmonary embolism, and aortic dissection. So these three has to come into your mind as the first step. Okay. So even in Australian setting, they say like usually they have these triple rule out tests that we do to rule out these three main diagnoses. So what are the main three? I, if I would say like, like if they are all invasive, not invasive, they're all like, can be like very expensive and can be radiation, like high risk radiation. So mainly angiogram, so coronary angiogram, usually CTPA, CT pulmonary angiogram and CT aortic, like aortogram. So for aorta and pulmonary and the coronary. So they, they check if there's any problems in those ones through CT. So if it is done, usually the most, more, like the most mortality highest differentials will be covered, especially like pulmonary embolism, aortic dissection and MR. Okay, so <clears throat> pericarditis, very good. So like the other ones as well. So as you said, GRD, pericarditis, all can actually cause chest pain. But main ones that you have to get into your mind as a differential is when someone says chest pain, these three, pulmonary embolitis, embolism, aortic dissection, and myocardial infarction are the main ones for us to differentiate. But as you guys said, yes, muscular skeletal pain is another one as well. So the, as cardiac causes, myopericarditis, angina, MI, Prolapse of the mitral valve, invascular aortic dissection, 
pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, and other other one most important one is pneumothorax. Pulmonary neoplasms, esophagitis, gastric reflux, esophageal tears, peptic ulcers, biliary disease. So any of these, any musculoskeletal problems, and even neurological issues as well. And then when we come into ischemic heart diseases, so what is ischemia? So what does it mean by ischemia? No oxygen supply. supply. Oxygen is less. Yeah, very good. So it is easy as that, like it is less oxygen, right? So any of the organism in the organ in the body, if it is getting less oxygen, then we call it as ischemia. So what is ischemic heart disease? When oxygen supply is less for the heart, then we call it as ischemic heart disease. So when we come into ischemic heart disease differentiation, what is the ischemic heart disease differentiation? So usually we can different it as asymptomatic and symptomatic. So mainly we discuss about symptomatic ischemic heart disease. So mainly symptomatic is either stable angina or acute coronary syndrome. So what is stable angina? So usually we call it as symptoms will actually come across with exertion, right? When someone is presenting to us with chest pain, we would ask them if it has been persistent or if it occurred from if if you guys if you have any precipitating factors that this uh, chest pain occurred. So usually, sometimes to the present uh, like hospital, they present with uh, people like usually like you know like consultants or GP. They will actually. Uh, uh, put the patient into a MIBI scan or like a stress ECG and then during that time the patient will come and then uh, present into the hospital. Sometimes from the imaging place they send it send the patient into the emergency. Sometimes the patient will say because in Australia sometimes like if, especially if you when you're working in regional areas they they actually have so many farms so there are farmers actually working hard. So some most of them will come and say that I was working, like I was doing that. I was like uh, pulling a wheelbarrow. I was actually trying to uh, get some woods down. So they will have some kind of exertion. And if the sim symptoms arise, then it is stable angina. Usually the atherosclerotic plaque is there, but it is actually stable. So it is not actually progressed into an thrombus or a ruptured plaque. And what is acute coronary syndrome? We call it as in three different manners, either unstable angina, non-ST elevation MI, and ST elevation MI. So usually atherosclerotic plaque will actually get ruptured and then thrombosis will be formed. So due because of that, the patient's coronary heart, like patient's heart, will have less blood supply because of that, the uh, heart muscle will be weak. So what, how do you differentiate unstable angina, non ST elevation in my and ST elevation? How do you differentiate? In case of unstable angina, patient will have persistent pain even when they are resting. Yes, yeah. I like, the usually acute coronary syndrome, they would say that they will have persistent pain. Yeah, that's true. How do you differentiate the acute coronary syndrome, there are three main acute coronary syndromes. So unstable angina, non-ST elevation MI, and ST elevation MI. How do you differentiate these three from each other? Cardiac markers, we can check for cardiac markers. Yeah, very good. So first thing, guys, ECG. Right Before cardiac markers, you will come for an ECG. So if in ECG, there's ST elevation, then it is ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction. So if they do not have ST segment elevation, then you will go for cardiac biomarker. So what is the cardiac biomarker which you? Troponin I. Troponin. Troponin. So it is easy. So if it is positive, what is that? That is MI. Yeah. So which MI? Non-ST segment elevation MI, right? So if usually if ST segment is elevated, and if, we, if it is chest pain and then ST segment elevation, then it is ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. You don't even have to have an troponin level in that case, then you will manage that.
Tanzania's television empire. 